We spoke yesterday. You were very emotional uh, when the news came in. You were emotional because of the men uh, and women who lost their lives hunting uh, this animal down Justice. who yeah. uh, plotted out 9-11, who, again, wasn't bin Laden's successor to al-Qaeda. He was bin Laden's mentor who pushed him towards al-Qaeda. Tell me what this means to you. Tell Tell me what this means to the professionals in the CIA who have been hunting this person down for 20 years. Joe, you're, you're, you're absolutely right. And I, you know, I find it even hard to talk about it now. This is a really deeply personal moment um, for me. In the hunt for Ayman uh, uh, al-Zawahri, um, I lost friends. I, I, I helped bury them. Um, and and so, so yesterday, you know, uh, uh, we're hearing this news, you know, it, you kind of sit back and, and you kind of reflect back on, on the last 20 years. You know, former CIA director uh, General Mike Hayden on social media yesterday essentially said, remember, coast. And what does that mean? On December 30th, 2009, uh, a suicide bomber, a double agent, you know, ultimately mm -hmm. working against us, uh, killed seven of my colleagues uh, in coast Afghanistan. That, that operation was designed to ultimately try to find and locate Ayman Zawakri. So I think last night uh, or yesterday when we, when we heard the news, you know, I had extraordinary pride uh, uh, you know, for my colleagues in the intelligence community who really have perfected this art of, of manhunting. Uh, but, but let's just, uh, you know, tip our hat to the men and women uh, of the intelligence community of my old organization, the CIA. We don't forget. We always remember it took 20 years. Um, but I think for the families uh, of some of the victims, uh, certainly the, of 9-11, and also the families of those officers, uh, the intelligence community lost their lives um, yesterday, you know, perhaps would give some closure. Um, Admiral Stravitas, we've been looking for uh, this terrorist leader for 20 years now. It seemed uh, that he would always elude us. He would always escape to the next safe house. Uh, what were your thoughts yesterday when you heard the news? And how, how important is this? It's huge. And this sort of reflects the arc, if you will, of this forever war. Um, and it really goes back before 9-11. Don't forget, in 98 is when bin Laden with uh, Zawahari right there at his right-hand side launches these attacks on American embassies, killing American diplomats, but also our local workers in Tanzania and Kenya. Then we have the cold. Then we have 9-11. Finally, in 2011, we kill bin Laden, our Navy SEALs. And now in 22, we take out Zawahari. Again, as Mark says so eloquently, the CIA does it. I mean, this is, if you will, the ultimate uh, expression of the interagency uh, continuing to take this road yeah. to find this yeah. killer. It's a remarkable moment. We ought to take a lot of pride across the interagency, but especially today to Bill Burns, uh, the director of the CIA, his men and women, uh, everything they have done um, really puts this uh, as a, a, a fine moment for America. We can't let our guard down. There are going to be many challenges ahead. We can talk about what this means for over the horizon for Afghanistan, for the Taliban, but we ought to just stop and celebrate for a minute. Uh, a yeah. very important yeah. moment in this war. Yeah, needless to say, uh, it's it's not often that these uh, are these things are executed perfectly, and this was executed with precision. As we mentioned, Al Zawahiri was second in command to Osama bin Laden when Al Qaeda attacked the United States on September 11, 2001. But. He was wanted by U.S. officials well before then. He helped plan the 1998 bombings of the U.S. embassies in Kenya and Tanzania that killed 224 people, including 12 Americans. He was also involved in the planning of the U.S. of the attack on the USS Cole in 2000. That attack, uh, in that attack, two suicide bombers in small boats pulled up alongside the destroyer as it refueled in Yemen and detonated. Their explosives. 17 American sailors were killed and nearly 40 were injured. Peter Baker, what more are you hearing from the White House uh, at this moment in terms of uh, what more they plan to communicate to the American public about this attack? Obviously, the president uh, had some comments, uh, but there will be a lot more questions uh, about what's next and also about the Taliban itself, their involvement. 
Yeah, that's right. I think you're right. They'll send, they'll sp send out their officials this morning. Obviously, Jake Sullivan's going to be on NBC. Others, I imagine, will be fanning out. It's a big day, obviously, for President Biden, an important victory for him at a time when he's feeling or when he's, uh, you know, enduring uh, still, uh, you know, some domestic political troubles, uh, you know, a clear victory for the United States, assuming the facts are as they've been presented, uh, you know, to be able to take out the number two, uh, you know, plotter for the 9-11 without any civilian casualties. These are actually a remarkable feat. But it does raise a lot of questions. You know, I was in Afghanistan just days after 9-11, and it's, it, I think what you see now is that Afghanistan has returned in some ways to that state that it was back then, where somebody like a Zawahiri feels that he can uh, live there relatively openly uh, with impunity. He, he, you know, he was not, uh, uh, he was right there in the middle of Kabul. That wasn't some cave in the mountains of uh, Tora Bora. That was right there in the heart of where the Taliban officials themselves live, a diplomatic enclave in the capital. The fact that he felt that he had impunity to do that is rather remarkable after 21 years of, of, of searching for him. On the other hand, obviously, what President Biden has said, he, he can now argue is true, that the Americans can still wage war against terrorists without having to put large, uh, you know, ground forces uh, in the country, that you don't have to necessarily have tens of thousands of Americans on the ground in order to be able to, uh, to take out a figure like Zawahiri. Uh, as they did through these drone strikes. So uh, it's, it's going to raise a lot of questions. You already heard Republicans last night saying that, the, you know, Zahiri's presence in Afghanistan uh, demonstrated the failure of President Biden's withdrawal. And you saw Democrats saying that the ability to take him out demonstrated the success of his policy right. in Afghanistan. Mark, uh, we'll come back to the policy in just a minute, but I want to just talk to you about the, the pursuit uh, of al-Zawahiri. And reading the accounts of this, just the extraordinary patience of American intelligence, the extraordinary patience of people like you in the CIA. I mean, we go back to 1998. He's had a $25 million bounty on his head, uh, been looking for this guy. And, you know, in some ways, reading these accounts, there are echoes of the pursuit of bin Laden, which is, you know, rebuilding uh, the apartment somewhere so that intelligence officials can look at and plan how to go after him. The use of this Hellfire missile, which just has blades on it. There's no explosion, so it can cut through metal, it can cut through concrete, and a target as well. This was not weeks or months in the making. This was years. This was a generation, effectively, in the making. Well, uh, Willie, really, that's right. You know, I, I think back to a really good friend of mine um, who spent, and, and, and understand this, spent 10 years searching for bin Laden. That's all he did every day for 10 years. And it wasn't in Paris or Berlin, it was in South Asia. It was in some really nasty places. So that's kind of the dedication that you find in the U.S. counterterrorism community. Uh, you know, at the end of the day, the United States has perfected the art of manhunting, you know, and, and I call it, you know, a triad that we have. You have, you know, human intelligence, um, which is spies on the ground. You have signals intelligence intercept, and you have ISR, which is in fact eyes in the sky, you know, manned or unmanned platforms. And our ability to over time, very patiently, very methodically, and with you know the, the, a notion of, of doing this with what we call zero collateral, without zero collateral, without civilian casualties, you know it, it is it is absolutely extraordinary. You know we've we've actually perfected this art of uh, of manhunting. Let me say something just just quite quickly because I think it's important in terms of counterterrorism strategy. We do two things uh, in a in a proper counterterrorism campaign. You try to take out the leader in a decapitation strike, like what happened. Uh, you know, uh, several nights ago. So, you know, that's that's cutting off, you know, the head of the snake. But at the same time, you do need to keep pressure uh, on the ground troops, on the foot soldiers of Al-Qaeda. And I think that's where, you know, there is an element of truth in the notion that, yes, we killed uh, uh, Ayman Zawahiri, but we need to keep a sustained campaign uh, on Al-Qaeda in Afghanistan. And, and over-the-horizon operations are going to be a bit more difficult in doing that.